So I have decided that I'm going to make a vlog type video uh, because I decided to do a stick. Ah! It's the first time I'm gonna try to stick something. Excuse the mess behind me. This is the life of a <laughs> mother of a toddler. Um, yeah, I decided that I'm going to make Iris another onesie and I just... I don't feel like doing all the pearls. <laughs> so, I decided to try to stick it. And it's the first time I'm ever going to attempt this. And I thought that I would bring you along. So, I will show you the project. It's under here. I thought first that I was going to show you, and I'm gonna do this video like vlog style, um, because it's gonna be over like a long period of time, it's gonna be different days and everything. I'm, it feels weird to like do the whole setup for a little stick update. Um, so yeah, I decided that I was gonna do this because the onesie that I made for Iris that looks like a Spider-Man costume, it's way too big. It's not going to fit her when I need it to fit her. Maybe it's maybe at the end of like this winter, it like winter and early spring it might fit but like I wanted her to use it this autumn and this like winter um, and it's just gonna be too big so I decided to make her a smaller one and um, but I did uh, a different pattern so I'll do the I think it's the Sunday suit by Petit Nin. Anyways I did my swatch here it is it looks black but it's actually very very navy um, and I'm using Knitting for Olives Merino. I'm holding it double, strand, double stranded, which is not what the pattern recommends. So I'm, have, I'm using two strands. It looks very black, but it is navy. It's, a, it's like a gorgeous, gorgeous navy color. Um, I'm holding two strands together. Uh, I'm doing it on two and a half millimeter needles, which means that my gauge is not even close <laughs> to what it's supposed to be. Um, I think it's supposed to be 28 stitches and I have 23. So I did some jiggery pokery, as Lucy from Hive Knits would call it. I uh, like did the calculations on the, the stitch count and everything to see what size I needed to make in order to get the size that I actually wanted. So I want it to be 9 to 12 months and I'm doing the 1 to 2 months size and hopefully that will be correct. Uh, so I did my swatch and I thought that I was going to talk to you about this before I started the project but then I went to knit night uh, last night and I casted this on and I almost finished the the yoke. So what I did is that I cast on and I immediately joined in the round which is not in the pattern since it's knit flat in the pattern and I just didn't want to do that. So this is what I have so far. Maybe I'll sit like this and you can see it. I don't know. I don't have any lighting in here, so maybe it's a little dark, bit dark. Uh, this is what I have so far. And I am doing the stick. And this looks ridiculously big. I'm trying to show you. It's very hard. Um, the stick looks so big. It is not. Um, part of the purling here, because I'm purling the stick. Hang on, I'm gonna try to get you some better light. Light! I have this thing here. I'll do like this. So maybe, maybe there's gonna be some better lighting. It's very moody out today, so maybe not. But this is better. So, this is what I have so far. And this is the stick. And it looks humongous. <laughs> it is not. As you can see here, uh, my stitch markers. So this part of the purling is actually part of the front. And the same here. So here and here I'll pick up the bottom band. And this section in between is the stick. Uh, so it's 14 stitches. And yeah, this is what I have so far. And you can see the color a lot better as well. It's very navy. Very navy. And yeah, I'm a bit scared. But I'll try to make it work. So the section that I'm especially worried about because this is not just a cardigan this is 
a onesie, it has legs. So what you do is that you knit it flat and then you join in the round and then you knit the bottom bands together. And then you do a few rows in the round and like increase for the legs and stuff like that. So I'm thinking I'm gonna do the stick, just keep going in the round until I get to the point where I should be knitting the bottom bands together and joining in the round in the pattern. Uh, and at that point, I think I will bind off the steek and then knit, knit one row and cast on the same amount of stitches or like as the bottom band would be wide um, and join that in the round and just follow the pattern. That way I will have a little hole at the bottom of my steek right before I joined in the round as the pattern suggested. Um, so when I cut my steek I can just go in the hole and then cut the steek and then add the bottom bands and then kitchener them to that cast on edge. Yeah. I think that if you haven't knit a onesie, what I'm saying right now probably doesn't make any sense at all. But I've knit three onesies now for Iris and so I have the like construction idea down and I think that's gonna work. We'll see. And I feel like this is so typically me. Like I'm gonna try to steak for the first time ever and I don't just stop there and do like a card again. No, no, no. I have to make it very much harder for myself by using an entire different gauge than the pattern suggests by using two strands instead of one and by doing a one C, which means that I have to figure out the situation where I'm supposed to be joining in the round when I'm already joined in the round and I don't want to like mess it up. So yeah, we'll see how it goes. I'll bring you along. Um, I won't show you like every time I'm knitting on this. I'm just gonna follow the pattern but do it in the round and yeah, we'll see how it goes. Uh, I can't update you every day, obviously, um, but I'll bring you along for the ride and we'll see how this works out, um, especially for like the fun parts of like cutting the steak and stuff like that. Wish me luck. <laughs> I'll need it. So I'm at work. Um, I work, I have more than one like part-time job when I'm studying, but right now I'm at work. I work at a bookstore. Uh, so that's why there's lots of books beho behind me. Uh, I'm hanging out in the office um, because I haven't started yet. Um, I was about to say good morning, but you don't know what time it is. <laughs> but it's like a quarter to 5 a.m. It's in the morning, right? So it's not even 5 in the morning yet. Uh, I work at an airport, so that's why I'm here so early. And I start at 5 and I have like... Yeah, maybe 15 minutes to go. My bus gets in at like half past four. Uh, so I have like 30 minutes before we actually open the store in the morning. So naturally, I'm knitting. Da, 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 da. Working on my Sunday suit with the steak. And I just, I, I just realized that I should have made the steak knitted. I'm purling the steak um, because I thought that would like be very distinct so it would be easy for me to see what's the steak. What I didn't consider when I did made that decision is that the on either side of the bottom band uh, the four stitches next to it on either side are purl stitches. So now I have those four stitches and then I have my steak and I ste it did the steak in pearl as well. So it's all pearl. <laughs> so it's, when I'm going to go pick up my bottom band, it's going to be harder for me to see what's the steak and what are those like four stitches that are supposed to be part of the like body. I need to make sure that I really count and like take my time with it. But I just realized it and I was like, oh, why didn't I just knit the steak? It would have been faster because I wouldn't have to like do the purling for the steak. And it would have been easier for picking up the bottom band. But you know, first time, this is something you learn, I guess. 
like figure out what the pattern <laughs> suggests and then do the sneak in the different stitch so you actually see it very defined which is what I thought I did but then I realized that when the stick was just looking so big it's because of those four purl stitches on either side anyways that's just life I have like 15 minutes left till I have to go open the store for the day and then I'm gonna work and then I'm gonna knit on my lunch break but yeah uh, I just wanted to pop in and say good morning <laughs> Hi, and tell you about my steak thoughts that I should have done it in knit stitch. But you know, that's life. Now I'm gonna keep knitting for a few minutes and then get working. See you later. Also, I just want to say that like knitting with this view over all the airplanes really makes me want to go on vacation. <laughs> Good morning again. Um, for you, it's probably been like. A few minutes since I talked to you uh, and told you good morning for me it's been 24 hours um, so we're back at work as you can see it's that clock that I was just looking at I was like oh my god I need to go open the store but that clock doesn't work uh, I just realized it says it's noon um, so it's like 25 minutes to 5 o'clock in the morning I'm back at work as you can see, and I have those, like I told you yesterday, my bus gets in at half past five. We open the store at five, that's when I start to work. Um, so I have this like 30 minutes to myself where I hang out at the office <laughs> uh, and like knit, maybe eat a snack, go to the bathroom and stuff like that before I need to get to work. Um, so I'm going to be knitting just like yesterday but today I'm actually only going to knit during like these 20 ish minutes that I have after I talk to you um, and for my lunch break and then I don't think I'm gonna knit anymore today because this is happening da -da -da -da. I'm having some like pain in my my left wrist mm. I feel like it's getting a bit overworked, maybe. Uh, I'm knitting a lot and carrying Iris a lot. She's at that age now where she's a bit more clingy, so she wants to be carried more. Um, so I'm carrying her more and I'm knitting a lot as well. So I feel like I'm getting some pain in my left an ankle, no wrist, um, and it's getting a bit strained basically and I don't want to overwork it too much because it was getting better yesterday it was fine uh, in the morning and I was knitting and it was fine and then I worked all day and like when I'm at the register at work uh, the register is on the right side of me where you stand uh, so you pick like this is getting very descriptive, but <laughs> like when a customer comes in and they put their like book on the counter uh, to pay for it, I always reach for it with my left hand because the register is on the right. Uh, so I reach for it with my left hand because that's the hand that has all the space. Um, so I reach for it with my left hand, I take it and I flip it to like scan it into the register and then I put it back or put it in a bag or whatever. Um, and this is not something that I have been thinking about before uh, but yesterday when I had done that movement a couple of times with this wrist that was already a bit overworked and sensitive it started to hurt um, so I was like purposely trying to do it with my right hand which felt so weird <laughs> um, isn't that funny though when you have like something that you're you're doing it without thinking about it but then when you're starting to think about it it's so hard to do it another way um, like try brushing your teeth with the hand that you don't like normally don't use. Um, I did that a lot for like piano exercises. Um, when I tried to work up like my strength in my left hand, I tried to, I used to brush my teeth with it just to get it to be more like dominant. Uh, and <laughs> it's, I think it's very interesting. How like something so basic that you do without thinking about it is so hard when you have to think about it and do it another way. Uh, anyways, very long 
ramble story. This is like, this is so typically me. <laughs> and I'm telling Simon something. He's like, okay, is there going to be a point at some point? <laughs> because I always go so far and just ramble. Anyways, what I'm trying to say is that my left wrist is hurting a bit today. Um, because of carrying Iris, because of that movement with the book scanning yesterday, and because of knitting, obviously. Uh, so today I'm only going to knit for like 20 minutes now, and then I'm going to knit for a bit during my lunch break. And then I'm not going to knit anymore today. So when I get home after work, I won't be knitting. I'll do something else. Uh, just to rest my wrist a little bit, because I don't want it to like get into a big problem. So yeah, I'm going to take it a, a little bit easy for a few days, just to like let my wrist recover. It sounds so boring when I'm thinking about it, like not knitting the way I used to, the way I usually do for a couple of days, but I think it's the, it's obviously the right choice when like your body is telling you to take it a bit easy, that's what you do. So today I'm wearing my wrist support to like help it out a little bit. I also like did some ibuprofen gel that I put on it to like calm it down a little bit and I'm gonna take it a bit easy today. So I have now been talking <laughs> for over five minutes about my wrist. That was not my intention. Anyways, I'm going to be knitting a little bit right now and I'm going to divide for the body. Yes! Uh, I almost finished the yoke. Here it is. It looks very not super nice because it's ribbing, which is not blocked, so it's all tight together. And it's also on needles that are a little bit too small, so it's all like scrunched up. But this is the yoke. It's almost finished. I will need to do like another half centimeter, I think, which is just a few rounds. And then I'm gonna divide and split for sleeves. And what I actually wanted to talk to you about when I started this little clip six minutes ago <laughs> uh, was the steak. I talked to you. I'm so sorry if I'm not looking at you. It's so disorienting because I can see myself. And um, yeah, I talked to you yesterday about the steak and that I was doing it in pearl stitch and maybe that wasn't a good idea because as you can see, it looks humongous because eight of these stitches are a part of the actual yoke and not the steak and all that yada yada. What I just realized when I thought about splitting for sleeves is that the body itself is knit stockinette. So maybe it was a good thing that I purled the steak and it, because if I would have done it stockinette then it would have been the same as the body. So I would have had this problem either way and the largest part of the project will be the body and the legs so maybe it's more convenient if the stick is actually purled the way I'm doing it now or maybe I should have done like one knit stitch on either side of the stick for the like yoke to really showcase what is the stick and what is not which I didn't do so anyways but I'm happy now that I did purl the stick because the rest of the body will be stuck in it so it's gonna be very distinct when I do the body. Yeah. That's just what I wanted to pop in to say eight minutes ago now. I am gonna blame this very rambly clip on the fact that it's like five in the morning and I'm very tired. Yeah. Anyways, I am gonna knit now for a little bit and then work. And since I am going to take it easy for a few days, I might not be popping in anytime soon. Uh, we'll see when I get back to this project. I'm thinking this video will be so long because I have now spoken almost 10 minutes about this. So I'm gonna wrap it up. I'm hoping you're gonna have a good day. I'm gonna knit now. I'll see you later. Bye. So it's been a while since I checked in. For you it's only been a few seconds, obviously. But for me it's been like a couple of weeks, I think. Um, I don't know why I haven't checked in. I just it just happened. Um, but I've been knitting on the project, obviously, and I finished the body, the little legs, the sleeves and everything. So the next part is the steaking section. So right now 
I'm hoping Iris won't wake up because I'm speaking. Um, Simon is at work and Iris just fall, fell asleep for her little nap. So hopefully she'll be asleep for like one and a half hours now. So I'm going to try to start the button bands. I think that's going to be like the first section I do of like the sticking situation. Um, I think I'm going to pick up the button bands first and knit them. Uh, before I do the steak. Uh, but I'm going to turn you around and show you what I had so far. So here it is and it's full glory. I haven't kitchenered the crotch section yet. Um, and here's my yoke and the sleeves and everything is done. So I did end up doing what I told you I might do. Uh, so where I got to one row before joining in the round in the pattern I bound off my steak right here uh, and then I cast it on new stitches to join in the round um, so these are the amount the like the bottom band this is bigger than the bottom band it's double uh, so I think it's gonna make it easier for steaking because I can just go in with my scissors in this hole and do the steak um, this section is not a stick, it's part of the crotch area. Um, and when I've done the bottom bands, I can just, I think, sew them to this or kitchener them to the, like, bind off. No, cast on, obviously. At least that's my, my plan that I'm gonna do. Pick up stitches along here, along the edges, and knit my bottom bands. And then in the pattern, you're supposed to, like, knit them together so that they overlap. And I think I'm just gonna overlap them and sew them to this uh, cast on here. We'll see. That's the that's the plan, general plan. So the next step now that I'm gonna try to do is picking up stitches along this edge all the way up and just knit the bottom bands. So that's what I'm gonna start now. We'll see how um, how far I get before Iris wakes up, but that's the plan for right now. Pick up stitches and knit the bottom bands. I'll keep you posted. Okay, so picking up stitches for the bottom band in this purl section was a hassle. I did it twice now and it looks terrible. So I've now like taken it all out and put markers kind of where I wanted to go because the thing is that it's increasing. So it's a lot smaller here and then it goes out. Uh, if I were to do this again, I would probably switch these sections so that the section closest to the bottom bands is a knit section because it's just a lot easier to pick up stitches from there to make sure that it's at the right place uh, so i've now gone over it put stitch markers where i kind of think they should be and now i'm gonna try it again i'm also hanging out with jonathan from jonathan's days um which is lovely so i'm gonna do it again now and hopefully it will work we have the first part of the button band. Da, 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 da. Um, Iris is awake, so I'm not going to talk a lot about it. I can hear her speaking in her little bed. Uh, I just wanted to show you. Um, I made it a little bit wider than the pattern suggests. Um, because I want this to fit her <laughs> at least a couple of months. Uh, so I wanted like just a tiny bit extra width. And I could probably have done like a sewn bind off to make it a little bit neater, but honestly I couldn't be bothered. So we have the uh, Jen is surprisingly stretchy bind off, just one by one rib. And yeah, I think for like my first ever picked up button band, this is totally, totally fine. Um, and obviously in the real pattern, if you do it, back and forth it probably looks a little bit nicer with this rib section when it goes the same way um, because now the ribbing goes that way on the bottom band and this way on the yoke but honestly i i can live with that and yeah i think now it's making me a bit excited because i can see a little more what it's actually going to look like when it's finished but yeah i've made one bottom band um I will pick up and knit the bottom band on the other side. Probably not today because like I said, Iris is now awake. So yeah, that's what I have today. Da -da -da -da. You can't see it. Um, 
so I'm gonna go pick her up because I don't want her to be sitting in her bed. Usually, like, there are books, she loves books, and there are usually books lying pretty close to her bed, so if she stands up, she can just reach them. So if you leave her in there when she's just woken up from her nap, um, she's usually, usually sitting, like, playing with a book that she found next to her bed. So she's probably kind of content because she does like to just flip through her books. There are books all over the floor because she just takes them from the like bookshelf and she just sits on the floor and flips through them. She really likes the books, uh, which I do love. Like, honestly, she can say three words at the moment. Two of them are mom and dad, but in Swedish, so mama and papa. And the third one is the Swedish word for book, which is bok, so it's kind of close. Um, she's talking to me now. I don't know if she, can, if you can hear her, but I can hear her. Uh, so it's so cute. She goes, she's like crawling around, going like book, 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 <laughs> which is so cute. Yeah, I'm gonna go pick her up now. Uh, if she does another long nap today, I think I will pick up the second button then and try to finish that. But otherwise, I will do that tomorrow. Yeah. I'll see you later. Sorry if you can hear the dishwasher in the background. So Iris decided to take another nap. And I decided to knit the other button band. So I now have two button bands. They're obviously going to overlap down here. So I'm going to kitchener them or sew them or something to the uh, cast on edge that I talked about. And then there's just the steak left to do. Yeah. So exciting. So it is now the next day. Iris is napping again. And I'm back with this project. So I'm now going to reinforce the steak a little bit. And then maybe cut it. Depending on how long she sleeps. Um, I don't have a sewing machine and I don't know how to crochet so I'm gonna hand sew the reinforcement and then I'm thinking I might try felting it just a tiny bit to make sure that it doesn't unravel uh, I know it's not supposed to I might just have woken Iris up I have to go and check I did wake her up but she's sleeping again now so I'm gonna stop talking and start sewing. So I am now going to attempt the steak. Oh my god, I'm a bit nervous to be honest, uh, but I'm gonna bring you with me so you can see all the scissor work because I know that's why you're here, to see me cut into some knitting, which is scary and exciting at the same time. So what I did is I have pinned the button band so they're not in the way. Uh, you can't really see it uh, because I used the same thread. But I did sew uh, a reinforcement on each side. You can kind of see it right there. If you really look closely, you can kind of see that there's like a line going there and there. So I did a sewn reinforcement. And I also felted it a little bit, not like all the way, but I did some felting of it just to make it a little bit sturdier. So what I'm going to do now is that I'm going to turn it inside out because I think it will be easier to find like the middle of the steak and cut it nicely on the knit side. So I'm going to turn it inside out and then I'm going to cut it. So yeah. I'm gonna set you up so you can see, turn it inside out, and then I'll be right back. I have now turned it inside out. Uh, this way you can actually see the felting a little bit better. It's a bit, it's blowing out a little bit so you can't really see it. But on this side you can see that it's just like a tiny bit felted. I have no idea if you can see this. So I'm gonna pretend to cut. And then I'm gonna pause this video and double check that you can see it. So you couldn't really see it, so I gave you a new angle. I just figured that I should really put something. I'll use this one. Yeah. 
This is one of Iris's books. <laughs> uh, I'm. It was just right here on the floor, so that's why I grabbed it. I couldn't be bothered to go get something better. So I'll put this inside just to make sure that I don't cut through um, the other side of the fabric because I really don't want to do that. So I have it right here so I can just cut and not worry about cutting the back piece. Ah, I'm a bit nervous about this, but okay, let's see, where's the middle? I read somewhere that you're supposed to go between a knit stitch, so a knit stitch is like a V, and I read somewhere that you're supposed to cut right through that. So that's what I'll do. I'll go for this one. I think this one is the middle. I could just count it, right? Just to be sure. I'm just gonna go in this one. So here we go. Wish me luck. Ah, oh my God. I'm doing it. I'm doing it, I'm doing it, I'm doing it. I'm going to move the book. Keep doing it. This is kind of scary, but also kind of fun. We now have a steaked project. Oh my God. So I've now turned it back. So it's the right side and I have cut it open. And I think you can really see that I felt it a little bit when you look at the edge here, which I think might be a very good decision. I'm happy with it. So I'm now going to uh, fold this and sew it to the inside and then I'll get back to you. So the color is blowing out a lot here, but just wanted to show you that I sewed the stick to the inside on both sides. So there it is. I sewed it there and I think it went really nicely. I also sewed the crotch. Um, so the only thing left to do now is these two bits right here where I did that cast on that I told you about. I got this funky little stitch here because I didn't do it neatly but I'll, that'll be covered when I'm done. I'll do it like this so you see it better. So this is the crotch area. Uh, so in the pattern if you don't stick it you are supposed to knit these two button bands together so that they are like overlap at the bottom when you join in the round. So what I'm gonna do now is that I'm gonna take each of these and I'm gonna sew them to this cast on edge so that they overlap and so there's no hole here. Um, and then I'm just gonna sew on the buttons. So this is what a vlog is. Me looking at myself and me like... <laughs> fiddling around with my hair and stuff. Um, but I just had a thought two seconds ago when I told you that I also had to uh, sew on the buttons, which is that I'm not sure I have buttons for this, which I'm gonna check now because I have my little button box right here. Oh no, I don't have buttons for this, do I? Oh, I don't have any buttons. I have a lot of buttons, but as you can see, I have some buttons. I raided my my mother's uh, button stash a long time ago when we were in our like mountain cabin um, in northern Sweden. 
So I raided her button stash, stash because she's not using it. She was like, take whatever you want. So I did that. Uh, so I had this little box here with lots of buttons that I took from my mother's stash. But I just realized that I need 10 of the same kind. And I think I have seven. So I'll have to get some buttons. Damn it, I thought I could finish this today. Hmm. Okay, so I'll just get some buttons. It's Monday today. I'm going into town for knit night on Thursday. So I'll just get some buttons then at my local yarn store. And maybe sew them on at knit night. I could do that, right? Yeah. I could do that. Yeah. So I'll sew the overlapping button bands so that the only thing left to do is the sewing of the actual buttons. And then it's going to be finished. Yeah. I'm so excited. I am a little bit sad now that I didn't have the buttons. Uh, but that's life. I don't know how I didn't think about getting buttons for this. Um, but it's fine. It'll be finished on Thursday. And then I'm going to edit this vlog and post it so that you can see this process. It feels like it's been a long time coming. And it's very autumnal outside now. The cold, crisp weather is really creeping in. So I feel like this really needs to be finished so Iris can start wearing it. And I'm a little bit scared that it's going to be too short for her now. Because <laughs> she's growing very rapidly. Um, if it is, I'll just try to block some length into it. Worst case scenario, I'll just go back and add some length to the legs. But I think it will be fine. Yeah! But we're very close now. Now we can actually see like what it's going to look like. And I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be cool. Yeah. Especially for like my first ever steak. I'm pretty, I'm pretty chuffed with this. So I'm going to sew the crotch. No, not the crotch. I did that. I'm going to sew the overlap of the button bands. And then I'm going to knit on something else. And yeah. I'll see you probably not anymore today. I don't think I sh need to show you the overlap. Um, I'll catch up when I've got the buttons and probably not at night. So I'll catch up when it's done probably. Which for you is in a few seconds. So I am now uh, leaving knit night. Uh, it was so fun tonight. It was the most fun knit night so far. There were not a lot of people. There were like 10 of us, but it was just so fun. It was great conversation and lots of laughs and stuff. So I'm really happy that I like challenged myself this year and go to the knit night. It's a bit scary for me. I don't, I'm not very comfortable talking to people I don't know. It's very outside of my comfort zone, but I'm very happy that I'm pushing myself because I really do enjoy it. And it gives me a lot of energy and I do get a lot of knitting done. It's also nice to treat myself to like three hours of just me time. So I'm now on my way to pick up Iris. She's been with her, with Simon's sister when I've been at knit night because Simon is not at home tonight. Um, but what I wanted to say is that on the way there, I did pick up the buttons that I needed and I did sew them on. So the steaking project it's not complete. Uh, I will show it to you when I get home or maybe tomorrow. So, there's a car. They look at me weird. It's also, it's always a little bit weird talking to yourself <laughs> when you're walking, but you know, what you're gonna do. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to say that I did finish the project at midnight and I will show it to you super soon. Um, yeah, I'm also wearing my newly finished Felix pullover. Uh, it was a whip in my last podcast. Yeah, I'm about to like meet a person who's walking, which is so strange if I'm talking to myself. So I'm going to stop. Um, I'll see you at home. Maybe not tonight, maybe tomorrow. And I'll show you the finished project. So I just got home. Uh, someone is putting Iris to bed. So if you hear screaming, that's why I'm trying to uh, teach her to sleep without me. Which is hard for us all. 
Oh, but I thought I would show you a sneak peek while the um, suit is taking a bath. And then I will show you the finished object in all its glory when it's blocked. Uh, but right now, there it is, hanging out in the bathtub. And I will show you the finished object when it's all dried. So I just wanted to check in and show you the finished product because I really want to edit and upload this vlog today uh, during Iris' nap time. So I'm trying to film this last clip now. Uh, so if you hear some noises or if she starts screaming, that's my daughter. Um, she's in the other room. So I'm gonna try to film this before she notices that I'm in here uh, because then she'll want to join me. So I have now blocked the finished product and it has all the buttons and it's ready to go so I'm gonna show it to you now so here it is da, 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 da. I really like how this turned out I think it looks so good um, the only like downside of sticking this specific Pattern is that if you follow the pattern to do it back and forth then the ribbing up here will go the same way as the ribbing on the yoke Which would probably have been a nice feature, but honestly I don't really mind that it doesn't And these buttons are a little crooked, <laughs> but you know Yeah, I'm really really happy with the result and I will probably stick again in the future so that's my sticking project. Oh, you can see my camera in the, <laughs> in the painting. Um, yeah, I enjoyed this process. I just had to listen to what Iris was saying. Um, I really enjoyed this process and I will definitely do it again. Um, it was just a lot faster, more enjoyable for me. The whole sticking process it did take a while, so maybe like if you add it up, like picking up the button bands and doing all that, doing all the sticking, maybe it's not faster if you like add it up because purling a row every other row it doesn't take that long. It just feels like it does. But I did enjoy this more, I think. And I also think that my tension is a lot more even. There's not a lot of rowing out, which I usually get when I do back and forth because my purling is a lot looser, which I know could be fixed with an interchangeable needle where I just have a smaller one on my purl side, but I like fixed needles, so I I haven't tried that yet. Probably will at some point. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed following me along for a really long time during this sticking process. And I hope that you try it if you haven't. It feels scary, it looks scary, but it's kind of satisfying. So I hope you try it out. But yeah, I will see you in the next video or podcast or whatever. I'm now going to go edit this. I hope you have a nice day and I will see you when I see you. Bye!